And we'll start with James Kapir from the Oregonian. Tim, I'm sure nothing that KT does surprises you anymore. Uh, but can you put into words not just the sacks, the, the, the sticking with plays, the forcing and setting up other tackles for law, all the things that he did this past week, how instrumental that was and, and what he's going to have to do this week for you against a Utah offensive line who statistically is also uh, obviously superb. I think he's the best defensive player in college football right now. Uh, you know, he disrupts a game. Uh, it's just rare to compare him to anybody. Uh, you have to take him into account. He's equally effective in the run game as he is in the pass game. People are going to try to screen him and get him, you know, get him running sideways. He chased things down from the backside. Um, you know, it's, it's really impressive to see him work during the week and to show up on Saturday and, and, and have it be as productive. And we're, we're a much better defense, obviously, when he's on the field. And we're starting to approach the, the type of defense we need to be. Um, as, as it pertains to this week, we have to have him playing at his best. Uh, they're a very physical running team. Uh, their pass game primarily uh, is spun off of their run game. Uh, they're a power downhill football team, and, and uh, they're very physical up front. They've got backs that are very physical. And ever since they've got uh, rising back or rising in at quarterback, uh, they've really been productive. And I think they're averaging about 40 points a game the last half dozen games or so. So our hands are going to be full trying to, uh, you know, uh, do some things to disrupt their uh, flow of what they're trying to do, and, and and KT needs to have a big game for us to do that. Zach Neal, Ducks Wire. Coach, I wanted to ask, ask you about Autzen uh, just for a second. I think Saturday night might have been as loud as it's been all season. Um, obviously, that's something you want to make life hard on the offense, but you're now in a position where you have to try and coach through all of that noise. Have you found any difficulties with that? Uh, not so far. You know, we've got a lot of signals in. Uh, you know, the, in a, I realized back when I was at Texas A&M the first time, when you've got a crowd that's that noisy, you better have defensive signals because you cannot communicate uh, when the crowd decides to get into it. And uh, the crowd was awesome. Did, you know, really got uh, Washington State, I thought, on their heels a little bit, made, made them uh, defensive, and it really got our guys cranked up. So hopefully we'll continue to have those kind of crowds and, and give them something to cheer about. Luciano Chatelain, end zoners. Hey, coach, I hope you're doing well and thanks for your time. Utah ranks 11th in the nation on offensive first downs. What is it that makes the rough and so effective and particularly the, the run game? Well, uh, they have an identity. Um, you know, they're very physical up front. Uh, they do a, a nice job of, you know, getting in multiple per personnel groupings and creating extra gaps with their, with their system. And so they make you not just play a, a you know, two-man surface or a three-man, but they have four and five, and you better be very, very uh, you know, clear as to who's got what gap responsibility. And once, once you do that and you start committing too many people to the run game, their play-action game, uh, they've got people who can take advantage of it. So uh, it's a system that, that uh, uh, Coach Ludwig has, has really done a nice job of, of evolving uh, you know, it's kind of an NFL trend now of, of scrunching formations down and creating additional surfaces and then having all the, the play action game off of it makes it really difficult on on defenses when you're trying to stop the run. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. But just going back to Saturday's game, they had a lot of success throwing the ball in the first half, but the second half, less than 100 yards. Um, was there any changes made there? Was that just a byproduct of being more comfortable with what they were doing throughout the course of a game? Was it the pass pressure, you know, the pressure you get in the quarterback that changed? I mean, what, what shifted there? Because it didn't seem like it was notably better in the second. Well, I, I think we probably played the, the screen game better in the, in the second half. Uh, you know, they hit us on the, the tunnel and the little swing screen. Uh, in, in the first half, um, you know, you, you got to do a good job of turning that thing back in. And uh, we were getting good pressure on the quarterback. I thought we disrupted uh, the timing a lot. Uh, and it just started taking its effect as the game went on. Um, the drive right after the, the turnover, I didn't do a good job in my, in my play calling. We probably were in man too much. And we got a rub route down there in the, in the red zone. And uh, we had a screen into it. So you know, some of that's on, on me as a play caller. So we've got to, you know, continue to uh, do a great job of, of chasing screens. And, and I got to do it, you know, good job of anticipating when they're going to run them. 
Pat Preem, 247 Sports. Uh, Tim, Utah, when they made the change at quarterback with Cameron Rising, seems like they've taken a jump there, and they lead the conference in scoring. He, I don't think he's thrown an interception in a month. Um, just your, your thoughts on him as a player and just how he's maybe changed the offense, what they were at the start of the year. Uh, he's a competitor. Uh, the, the thing that, that jumps out at me is I think the way he competes, the rest of the offense kind of rises around him. Um, he just makes plays. He's, he's an athletic guy who's, who's got like a, a little bit of an edge to him, seems like. Uh, probably doesn't have a classic throwing motion. Probably isn't a classic, uh, you know, running quarterback or, you know, uh, athletic quarterback but he moves the sticks and makes that offense go. And, and uh, it's impressive to see. And, you know, he's a physical runner. They, they put you in some formations uh, with what they do to, you know, create some, some situations where, where, he, you know, he's got one read and he can beat a guy when he pulls it, you know, he's not probably the fastest guy on the team, but he's a very, very effective runner. And he puts the ball in the right spot uh, all the time. I mean, he's a very, very accurate thrower uh, he, he creates a lot of issues and, and, you know, obviously their, their offense has responded to his leadership and, you know, we've got to do some things to try to, to make him uncomfortable. James. Back to a multi tight end team again, Tim. Um, but your thoughts on how Jamal has uh, progressed in his ability to cover uh, against those guys and, and also having a guy like Happel uh, and your inside linebackers where that was an issue earlier in the season, but they've progressed in their ability and pass coverage, your thoughts on, just the, the collective group there, the safeties and um, inside backers and pass coverage of tight ends. Well, again, what these guys do is everything's, you know, driven off of their run game. So you've got to be extremely disciplined with your eyes. Uh, Jordan's usually really good at that. I think early in the season, we had some situations where Jamal was coming in after not being around in camp and, you know, some of that eye discipline, you need to see it and get burned. You got to understand that stove's hot and you got to touch it. Oh yeah, it is hot. Uh, before you realize it and Jamal had those situations early in the year and he's learned from those and so his eye discipline has been a lot better um, uh, we, we need it because I think their their tight end position has around 70 or so catches you know between uh, all the the tight ends and uh, they're probably the the by far the most uh, uh, tight end centered offense in, in the conference or one we at least what we've faced this year Jared Denny scoop duck on three Hey, Tim, I just want to ask about Brandon Dorless. I, I know the box score doesn't always necessarily reflect what he does, but it just seems like he's been really, really disruptive the last few weeks. I'm curious what you've sort of seen from him on tape. Really twitchy player. Uh, I think he's starting to play with much, much more confidence. Um, as our defense has gotten better, a, a large part of that's due to what what he and, and Popo have done up front. Um, they're, they're moving very dynamically. Uh, they can penetrate. They're strong at the point of attack. Uh, we're doing some things with, with moving our fronts pre and post snap that, that they can handle. And, uh, you know, Brandon's a guy that he's athletic enough. You can put him on the edge. And so you got him on one side and KT on the other in some of our packages. And, you know, if they're going to slide the protection one way, one of those guys is, is going to get a one-on-one -on -one most of the time. So uh, he's, he's somebody that, you know, gives us a, as a play caller more options. And we're going to continue to try to take advantage of his ability because he's showing that he can handle it and he's, he's very productive. Time for two more. Eric Berniker, Daily Emerald. Uh, hey, Coach. Thanks for being here. So in the last six games, you guys have given up three total third quarter points. What does this say about like the team's ability to make in-game adjustments or their ability to be resilient and stick to a game plan? Well, I, I think uh, our guys, when we come in at halftime, are smart. Uh, you know, we kind of assess where, where things are and, and what we need to do. And our guys come out with a different energy. And, and a lot of that's been due to our offense as well. I mean, they've come out and taken control of running the, the, the ball and, you know, keeping us on the side always helps. So uh, it's been a team effort, I think, in the third quarter. Um, our guys coming out with a renewed energy, maybe a couple different thoughts, and uh, our offense doing a really nice job of taking care of it. Last question, James. Tim, I, I realize coaches always – try to get to know their players as much as possible. But when you're a coordinator, you got half, a, you know, half the room and a lot of stories to learn in a quick period of time. And when you're in season, you don't necessarily have the luxury. How much have you gotten to know Brian Addison's more personal story? And it's, it's obviously not a very positive one, uh, a, a lot of real tragedy there. How much have you just gotten to know 
him, his background, and what it means to you that he's playing like he has for you the last several weeks? Well, I don't know all that that personal background, but but I just love the fact that you know I know that that he was a you know a receiver a year ago, came over in the springtime, and has been really working hard to understand what we're doing. And you know we've seen it at practice that he's been making more and more plays and. For him to, you know, get a pick the other day and, and be as productive as he's been the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, makes me feel good as a coach. You know, Marcel does a great job with those guys in the back end, you know, simplifying things to make sure that they understand it and can play within the package. And, you know, it lets guys like Verone and, and Hap and, and Jamal and, and, and B.A., you know, all those guys really show their athletic ability. And he's got a lot of it. So hopefully we'll be able to, you know, continue to have him evolve and uh you know, we need him because we, we need that depth. You know, we've been, you know, hit a little bit like everybody in the country with some injuries and, uh, you know, having a guy like him that you can depend on is, is very, very important. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. No problem.